Hey guys, welcome into the latest edition of Sports First, courtesy of my home. Uh, on this edition of Sports First, we're talking, chatting Real Madrid because guess what? A player has tested positive for COVID-19. We're going to release who that player is and what this could mean for Real Madrid's trip to the Etihad. And speaking of trips, a player who isn't uh, too keen on getting on a plane to Barcelona is Arthur, who refuses to return from Brazil. We chat the latest on that before hopping on the transfer train and talking Kepa. We talk Thomas Rodriguez to Manchester United. So much to get to. Sports first starts now. Hey, hey, party time! Because um, Gabriel Amato alongside Georgi Metellus and Iñaki Angulo, who joins us uh, all remotely, we're all together, kind of, virtually at least. And I want to begin with the big news of the day, which is a Real Madrid player has tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, we have since learned that this player is Mariano Diaz. He just returned from a trip. Obviously, all of the players were on uh, a much-deserved little break uh, from the restart era and now looking ahead to the Champions League. Uh, and Real Madrid did confirm that he has tested positive. And so he will go into a 14-day quarantine uh, and will be ruled out for that trip to uh, Manchester for the second leg of the Champions League. George, I want to begin uh, with you, and then we're going to head straight to Madrid to get the latest. Um, obviously, devastating news uh, and, and still much to be determined about what this means for the game. So actually, let's head straight to Madrid and let's get the latest from Iñaki. Iñaki, uh, Mariano tests positive. What does this mean uh, for the trip to Manchester? Yeah, hi Gabby. The first thing is that he's okay. He confirmed that he feels great. He's an asymptomatic, so there's no issues with his uh, health, which is the most important thing when it comes down to something uh, health-related. And the second thing in terms of football is that he's not going to travel uh, to Manchester to that Champions League class against uh, Man City. Yesterday, the Real Madrid players and every player involved in the Champions or Europa League had a test. And inside the protocol, it was the doctor who traveled to the players' houses for, for them to know to get in touch between them. So he was isolated yesterday and he will be isolated for 14 days. He won't uh, travel, but the good news for Real Madrid is since that UEFA protocol established, established that the players would be texted at their houses, he hasn't been in touch with any teammates. So Real Madrid uh, team is not in danger and Mariano won't play that game, but he's okay. So he will continue with his life and then he will rejoin the team if Real Madrid uh, goes through in the Champions League. Right, so that was actually going to be my next question. So you're saying that the doctors actually do the tests in the individual players' homes, which is good news because the next concern was if in the next batch of testing done to Real Madrid players, if there was going to be more and other players who tested positive. So that seems unlikely now uh, from what you're saying, Iñaki. Yeah, especially because they avoided yesterday this uh, group contact. They've been in contact uh, until the last day of La Liga, so they practiced uh, together. If we go back to the first protocol of La Liga when football uh, restarted, they had to go to Valdebebas, the training facility, to have the first test. But this time, according to UEFA's protocol, they avoided that first contact, considering that the players uh, had been on holiday and having uh, been in touch with other people because after when they came back for La Liga, we were in lockdown here in Spain, so they didn't have uh, that problem, but now they, they did have it and they consider that. So Real Madrid players should be out of risk, but we know with this kind of uh, disease that it's very special that, I mean, the, the, the most likely scenario is that uh, Mariano got the virus during his holiday, but there's still a small chance that he took it before holiday. So Real Madrid players will be tested regularly to confirm that they are out of Corona. Right, and we do wish him a very speedy recovery. It's great news that he uh, is feeling great. He did put out that message to all of the fans, thanking them for their support uh, and confirming that he is feeling okay. And so a quick recovery for Mariano. We'll keep you guys all posted on uh, the latest Real Madrid news. Hopefully no one else tests positive uh, from there. The other big news of the day, though, surrounds uh, the Barcelona camp, Arthur, uh, who refuses to get on a plane, refuses to return to the Camp nou. He did not show up for testing on Monday. 
today in the Barcelona camp. Uh, George, I want to bring you in and get your initial take uh, on this news. You can't really blame him. I mean, Barcelona really haven't treated him uh, perhaps the way that he deserves or any player deserves to be treated. He was very openly uh, transferred against his will. He's always said that he wanted to stay put at Barcelona. They need the money. They shipped him off to Juventus. Of course, he was supposed to stay until the end of the Champions League campaign. Now he's saying he's not coming back. What's your take on this Arthur situation, George? Well, for me, I think he's doing the right thing. He's technically, I know he was supposed to wait until the end of the Champions League to make the move to Juve, but for all intents and purposes, he is a Juve player. So why play more for Barcelona? Why finish the season for Barcelona, especially when you consider that he hasn't gotten much playing time anyway? So good for him. He's, in his mind, he's a Juve player, and technically he is a Juve player, regardless of when the, he, he actually physically makes the move to Turin or the city of Torino. So good for him. He's a Juve player, he plays for Juve. He shouldn't have to play for Barcelona and he probably wasn't gonna get minutes in the Champions League anyway. So it, 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 I, I applaud him for taking his stance and saying, look, this is the team I play for. I don't play for you all anymore. The only thing I would say to him is just go to the, the training facility, get that free COVID test, make sure you're negative and then you can move on. But uh, he's doing the right thing. He's not a Barcelona player, so why should he continue to be playing for Barcelona? So good for him, good for him. Take a stand on what I team you play for and make sure it makes it, make it happen. So just to clarify, because I think uh, a lot of people in our comment section do agree with you, George, and I'm going to hit the comments in just a bit. Reminder that this is an interactive show, so comment below and we'll get to your comments throughout. But technically speaking, he does still have a contract with Barcelona until the end of the campaign, until the end of the Champions League. And so that is uh, the problem here. Barcelona saying that he is in breach of contract by not returning and that they are going to take legal action if he does insist uh, upon not returning. But for those of you that maybe were sleeping over the past couple of weeks, Arthur was transferred uh, to Juventus in a swap deal with Pjanic. Uh, $81 million move to Juventus was uh, the details of that move. Let's hit the comment section, though, because everyone's agreeing with you, George. Uh, Dean Michelini saying Barca should release Arthur of its contract, uh, too, since he wasn't treated well and hasn't played, so he agrees with you. Brendan Burns saying can't play him at all, at all. He's no longer a Barca player. Again, technically speaking, by paper, by the law, the lawyers are going to say you're still a Barcelona player, you still have a contract, and you need to fulfill your contract, which is until the end of the Champions League. Uh, but figuratively speaking and maybe uh, sentimentally speaking, he is no longer a Barcelona player, and that's, yeah. that's no secret. Pasha Shafori saying and Barca treated him like garbage. I don't blame him for not playing. They can suffer without him. George, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you, you mentioned technically speaking in the contracts. How many times do clubs violate contracts to get rid of a player? It happens all the time. So it shouldn't be a big deal that a player technically violates his contract in order to move to another team that he's already going to be moving to anyway. So uh, this whole thing about the club and the legalities, the clubs break the law and break contracts all the time as well. And Yaffe, I want to bring you in. What's the feeling uh, in Spain about this? Do they feel sorry for Arthur? Are they angry with him because he's not fulfilling his contract? Do they understand where he's coming from? Uh, what's the perspective in España? I mean, I'm going to say my perspective. I understand what you are saying, and I agree from the player's standpoint. But in football, it seems that there's a good way of doing things, that there's a bad way of doing things, and there's a Barcelona way of doing things because things are working out for Pjanic in Turin, in Turin for Juventus. He is playing and he is ending in a high note. He is ending as a gentleman. And now uh, Arthur is not. And I think it has to do with the club because they lack leadership inside the locker room and I think they lack, they lack leadership uh, among the club. So I think it has to do uh, in which how the club is uh, run because Juventus, I think they are a smart organization. They are a good organization. They signed that deal that extended both players' contract until the ending of the Champions League. And one thing is working for Juventus and one thing is not working for Barcelona. I think we have to go down to, to uh, the specific case, to Arthur and to Pjanic, but we, we also need to look what's happening in Barcelona and why Arthur uh, doesn't want to go back there. 
Yeah, definitely. It's a very complex situation and no one can really blame uh, what Arthur is doing and how he feels. I want to get back to the comment section because this is causing quite a stir. Clayton Brown saying clubs can't legally violate a contract, LOL. Yeah, of course, legally speaking, no one can violate a contract because you're going to be in breach of contract and you're going to suffer the consequences. Uh, what George was insinuating is that clubs go against the contract all the time and he's kind of uh, sticking up for the player in this case, which is Arthur who has been treated poorly and doesn't want to return. Rafa Castorena saying Arthur doesn't want to play with a bunch of uh, wankers, Barca, LOL. Okay, that's not nice, but uh, who can blame Arthur with the current state that Barcelona are in? Lance Pimentel saying, have you noticed that Barca never treat their players right? Which is what Inyaki was saying. This is kind of the new Barcelona of consistently treating players wrong, of making the wrong purchases, of making bad investments, and, and when or how is this situation going to change for you, Inyaki? I don't know. I mean, I think uh, if we go back to this uh, case, it has to do with uh, with the board. It happened the same with the racket. Right. I mean, this is a business we are in, and I know that we sometimes a club I want to get rid of a player, but you need to do things uh, smoothly, and you can't put a, a player uh, out of uh, your club like they, like, like they did with Rakitic and now like, like they did with Arthur. Arthur is now a richer man, so no one uh, imposed him to sign that lucrative contract with uh, Juventus, but there's a, a common thing with Barcelona, and some players have felt uh, under uh, under respected by their own board, and I, I kind of feel, I, I don't know how Barcelona fans feel towards uh, Rakitic, but I think they understand him because he hasn't been used uh, since this uh, swap was uh, was made. Luckily for them, Ricky Puig, for example, is uh, stepping up and he's going to be the future of the club. Uh, Pjanic is going to be the present of the club, but Puig might be the future and Artur is in the past, but I think that Barcelona need to uh, to, to rebuild uh, their teams in terms of, of how they treat their, their workers. Yeah, most definitely. A, a, a tough situation for Barcelona fans to be watching uh, and tougher for the players who are involved and, and tougher for players who, like Arthur, unfortunately reap the poor consequences of it. There is good news, though, in the Barcelona camp. Big training news. Longley, Griezmann, and Dembele did some training work on the pitch today. This is major news as Barcelona look ahead to the second leg against Napoli. Uh, a bit of a defensive crisis that Barcelona are currently under with Umtiti injured and Ronald Araujo also injured. Uh, and so this long lane news is definitely going to be welcomed. And Dembele back, which fans are dying to see Dembele play once again. It is fingers crossed that he will be fit uh, for the Champions League, if not in the initial match against Napoli, if Barcelona were to um, go ahead and book their ticket to the next round, uh, perhaps for that match. What role do you think Dembele could potentially play uh, in the Champions League for Barcelona? George, we'll begin with you, and then we'll go over to you to Iñaki. Well, I'll be shocked if he plays anything. Really? Uh, I, I don't know what. But he, he's getting I'll be his fitness he back. Plays, he's getting his fitness back, but will he get it back in time for the Champions League? And then will he get injured again? You talked about fingers crossed, fingers, toes, uh, whatever other <laughs> legs, appendages arms. there are there. Legs, <laughs> arms. I mean, I don't know. What, what is it? Kidneys? Whatever. <laughs> whatever you can cross in the body, you better pray. You better cross them and hope that Dembele doesn't get hurt again. Re remember, when he came back the first time earlier this season, he basically got injured right away. So we don't know how what his status is, if he's going to be able to play, how many minutes he can play. So if I'm a Barcelona fan, I would not count on Dembele. I would not count on him at all because he hasn't been reliable throughout the season because of injuries basically been non-existent with zero influence so i would not expect anything from dembele and i think if you're a barca fan you shouldn't expect anything from dembele keep all your your, your organs crossed whichever ones you can <laughs> and hope that maybe he can give you something maybe he'll be effective over time let's say they get past napoli i think they will maybe he can he could feature a little bit in the in the quarterfinal but now, I have zero expectations for Dembele, and I think Barca fans should have zero expectations for him as well. And Yaki, uh, over to you. The expectation is that Dembele will be fit for, uh, if not this first clash against Napoli, uh, the next round, if Barcelona were to book their ticket to that next round. The expectation, George is saying don't, we don't want to expect anything from Dembele. Barca fans shouldn't expect anything from him. But there is expectation for him. Barcelona fans expect to see him back. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm sure they expect him back, but I agree 
with you. I think we need to uh, see the big picture because it's not about one Champions League leg. It's not about playing in this Champions League. I think when it comes down to this kid, his career is on the line. I think he's been extremely injury prone and they haven't found why he's carrying injured. So they need to dig into the situation and discover what's going on with uh, this kid because if they don't and if they don't do it quickly, his career is, is done. I can remember cases like Arjen Robben or even uh, Leo Messi which, uh, who had injuries or were injury prone at uh, an early level uh, of their career and then they found out what was going on with that body and they fixed it and Arjen Robben is one of the players of his generation and Leo Messi is one of the, play one of the best players in, in history. So I wouldn't rush anything with Dembele. I think that Ansu Fati is a much more productive player right now and Tuan Griezmann as well and I think his career is on the line. They need to know why this guy is uh, getting injury after injury. If not, he's right. not going to be the great player he might be because he can dribble, he can score, he uses both legs. I think he's one of the most gifted, uh, gifted young players uh, in the world. But if he's uh, not, if he's not avoiding injuries, he's not going to be a player at all. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, Iñaki. It's kind of do or die for Dembele because Barcelona mm -hmm. need to assess the situation. Is this a player who has just hit a stroke of bad luck and he's been injured and, and that's all it is? It's just been bad luck? Or is this a player who really is not going to have a future at Barcelona and they need to cut their losses like they need to do with Coutinho uh, when looking at the future? I want to hit the comment section because a lot of you do have an opinion on Dembele. Young Jay Swagger saying Dembele not going to do anything for Barca. Barca needs better defensive players. Uh, that is correct. We'll talk about who's missing in this match too, which causes a bit of defensive worry uh, for Barcelona. Daniele Comey Jr. saying Napoli is good because there's no Barca fans to distract them. Way to go, Napoli. So Danielle rooting for Napoli in this uh, second clash. Um, someone else saying when you're out for months, you need months to get back to the football touch. Uh, Mubarak Aldasari saying that. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see Dembele who's been out for, for months with this injury and how he kind of eases back into the game when there's no time to ease back in. Isn't that right, George? It's do or die and you have to get right into the, into the game and, and get in running because this is the Champions League that we're talking about now. Absolutely. That's 100% that's correct. There's, there's no time and uh, who was it that, that made the point about a hundred, you need months to come back after you've been out for months? That's a great point. You need time, and you can't expect him to be effective after he's missed all that time in a, in a week and a half against a very good team in Napoli. So that's why I say you should have, if you're a Barca fan, you should have zero expectations. Look, if you have zero expectations, he can't let you down because you have, there's nothing, there's no emotion behind it. He can't let you down. So if you have zero expectation and he gets hurt, you're like, oh, well, that's par for the course. That's normal. That's, what, that's what's been the case the last few months. But if you get your hopes up too high and he gets hurt like he's done in the past, then you're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to be disappointed. So keep the expectations low. And if he's healthy and he performs well, which I'll be very surprised if he does, but if he performs well, you're like, hey, what a pleasant surprise. It's well, I hope very simple. You keep the expectations low. I hope he surprises you, George, because I think this is a player that we would all love to see thrive once again. And Christian yeah. Ariel Meave uh, in our comment section saying he said his career's on the line. What do you mean? Dembele's just injured. The kid is amazing. And yeah, Christian, we agree with you. This was an amazing prospect, and that's why Barcelona paid the price tag that they did for him when Neymar left, because he was a player with a ton of promise. And the reality is, is that it's been over two seasons now that he has not delivered on that promise because of injuries. And so, yeah, I tend to agree, even though he's very young, uh, this is the time that Barcelona need to decide, okay, has it been unlucky? Is it just that he's been injured? Or is this going to continue and therefore cut your losses and your future with Barcelona could be over? And so that's what we mean by his career being on the line. But thank you as always for your comment, Christian. Uh, sticking with Barcelona, though, I want to talk about Ter Stegen, whose contract talks are still undergoing. Uh, Inyaki, what is the latest on this? They cannot seem to come to an agreement. The latest is that Barcelona have actually asked him to take a pay cut he's one of the best keepers in the world what is the latest the latest it is that he was asked about uh, his contract extension and he said we'll see but i think that barcelona can see they need to extend this guy's contract because he's one of the best goalkeepers in the world he's one of the true leaders of this barcelona side and i think he has ahead of him at least five six or seven years of one of the top players in the world they would think for barcelona it does that uh, they've been having that from uh, from him from ter stegen and they're paying him because he's been heavily underpaid 
Spain considering the high wages of Barcelona squad and considering the position. So they've been saving money with him like the Seattle Seahawks did with Russell Wilson in his first contract. But now they need to bring in the money. They need to pay Ter Stegen because they are not going to find a better goalkeeper in the transfer market. So I think uh, uh, Ter Stegen has all the leverage in this negotiation with Barcelona. But Barcelona needs to, to pay him because uh, he deserves it. Yeah, I totally agree. George, your take on the Ter Stegen talks. I mean, let's just paint a hypothetical situation because, you know, I love my hypotheticals. Let's say that Barcelona <laughs> can't come to an agreement with Ter Stegen and Ter Stegen walks. I mean, that would be the loss of the century. This is arguably the best goalkeeper in the game at his prime. You have a player who you could realistically have for another eight to ten seasons. If you let him walk, I don't even want to know what Barcelona fans are going to say. Your take on that hypothetical. Yeah. That hypothetical, they better have a really good goalkeeper coming up through La Masia and to let him go, because if they don't, they're in big trouble. This is, as Iñaki mentioned, this is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. You can make the case that he's the number one goalkeeper in Absolutely. the world. A player like that, you cannot find on the transfer market. Like Iñaki says, he, he makes a great point. So you have to pay him. You know, it's like Jerry Maguire, show me the money. You have to pay him. <laughs> and they, can, they can afford it especially if they sell a couple players and, and, and make some money and help uh, supplement that, 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 that transaction or that financial move. So it, it, this, is, this is very simple. I know there's negotiation, so one side has to give, another side has to take, vice versa. But in the end, I think they'll get it done because I think Barcelona at the board understand that this is one of the top two or three goalkeepers in the world. He's very important. And you talk about defensive frailties. You can't lose one of the best goalkeepers in the world and expect their defense to improve or even stay at the same level. So they have to find a way to pay him. And I think they will. It's just, it's just a, a drawn out negotiation that's taking longer than expected. A lot of people in our comment section saying that, uh, you know, Messi aside, Ter Stegen has been Barcelona's best player game in and game out. A lot of people talking about Premier League interest in Ter Stegen, heavy interest from Chelsea. If we have time, we'll talk about Chelsea's current goalkeeper situation. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a player who can realistically get the money that he deserves to be paid elsewhere, probably in the Premier League. And there are quite a few Premier League clubs who could use a new keeper. United, we're looking at you, maybe. Sorry, De Gea, but let's be real. Uh, and so Barcelona need to cough up the money or risk losing him. And I, I agree with you, George. I think this uh, deal is going to get done and dusted. Speaking of Manchester United, James Rodriguez linked once again with a move to United. This is nothing new, but it does appear that there is even a price tag set, $29 million. What's the latest on this move in Yankee? It can be made because Real Madrid want to get rid of James Rodriguez, but he needs to bring a good offer to the, at least a decent offer. I think that this Man City make, uh, Man United sorry, makes uh, sense because Manchester United uh, will be in the next Champions League. They are one of the richest teams in, in the world, and I don't think they expect James Rodriguez as a starter. I think they made a great move bringing in uh, Bruno Fernandes, arguably a top three player since he reached the Premier League in the previous uh, transfer window. So he's going to play ahead of James Rodriguez, but James can add uh, depth to a squad uh, that needs, uh, I think, in my opinion, they need uh, depth. But yeah, Manchester United can be an option for James Rodriguez, but I don't think, at least uh, until, uh, at least uh, given my information, that Atletico Madrid is longer an option for uh, James Rodriguez. It was 12 months ago, but I don't think James Rodriguez is going to stay in the city of Madrid, only changing the club he's uh, representing. So, yeah, I think he might uh, travel to the, to the Champions League and, yes, to one of the greatest clubs uh, in the history of football as Man United. I know. Honestly, a solid move for James if this does go through. This is a player who clearly is uh, on the outs of Real Madrid. You know, Zidane doesn't plan uh, on a future that includes James Rodriguez. He did have uh, some success at Bayern. We know that Bayern doesn't want to splash the cash uh, that it would take to get a James or even a Coutinho. So those loan deals did eventually come to an end. James, though, was linked, George, with a potential move to Napoli, with a potential move to Everton. And just like Iñaki said, also with a potential move to Atletico Madrid, of all of those options you have to agree that Manchester United is actually the best one so this could be the best result for the Colombian yeah if you if you want to rank them it's number one United number two Atleti because of the Champions League football Napoli is not going to be in the Champions League next year Everton is not going to be in the Champions League next year so it would go one two three four like that uh, it's a great move for Manchester United and for Hamas look he doesn't have to be the main playmaker on that team. Bruno Fernandes is the main playmaker on that team. He can be a very good supporting 
uh, midfielder that can provide some creation, maybe allow Bruno Fernandes to go forward a little more. So I think tactically it makes sense. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to play a little more possession football. He has some great finishers and, and up top with the MRG, I call them, with Martial Rashford and, <laughs> and Mason Greenwood. So it, 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 it makes sense for him to be, he won't be the star, he won't be the, the main playmaker, but he could be a very good supporting playmaker that provides Manchester United with that depth. I think it's a great move for him. I think he should go. And hopefully Real Madrid, if you're a Manchester United fan, hopefully Real Madrid don't drive up the price too high where the negotiations fall off and then, and then Hamas is stuck with the Merengues for another season. Yeah, so I agree with you guys. I think it's a perfect move, and our comment section does agree uh, with it also. Brendan Burns saying, Hamas would be good for United. Lance Pimentel saying, best team, yes, but for playing time, no. Well, let's be real, Lance. He's going to get more playing time probably at Manchester United than he is at Real Madrid, which is uh, zero. Yeah. Actually, like negative playing time because he's not even included in the squad. So true, mm -hmm. but I think it's a better fit for him. Jaben Karama saying they won't bench Bruno for him. Ain't that the truth? Very quickly, we got the 30-second warning, but there's an interesting rumor that's brewing, and I'm sure we'll talk about it more um, tomorrow. Kubo linked with a move to Ajax on loan. Inyaki, yes or no? Do you like it or no? Uh, I don't think he's going to go to Ajax. A very good, a formative team. I think he's going to stay in Spain, and I think that Seville option is growing, and I think he might stay in the south of Spain in Seville. All right. Well, George, we'll get your take on it another time because we're all out of time. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll talk more Kubo mañana. Ciao, ciao.